What's up, guys? It's Z Michael A. from 1907 here to get a review of The Amazing Spider Man 2. Now, I really do love the Spider Man films all in general. They always have been a fun Spider Man uh, films. They always brought one of my favorite uh, Marvel characters to life, which was The Amazing uh, Spider Man in general. And I really do love it. Now, the first one, which I actually have, well, not the first one, but the reboot, I actually have right here, was a really good reboot to the franchise. A lot of people told me that they didn't really enjoy, like the reboot that much. But I really lo looked at it as a different point of view, and I really kind of enjoyed it as a different type of Spider-Man. Uh, Sam Raimi's a trilogy, which everyone loves for its unique witty in it at the time, actually one of the best comic book films uh, trilogy, it was a really unique superhero-like film altogether. And I really do love that. And when I came to watching these new Spider-Man films, I actually had to get the thought of Sam Raimi's films out of my head to try to think of it as a new type of film. And may I just say here, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is being a little underrated by audience, um, critics overall. Based on the fact that it's getting a 54% on Rotten Tomatoes, I don't think you should listen to a lot of the reviewers who are actually downgrading the film and disrespecting it. Because in my opinion, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 actually is a lot better in some ways than the reboot. I'm going to say why in this review overall. Before I go deep into that, I'm going to go into the cast and crew as in who has been added and who has been left out and who is the same. Now, we have new writers for the for this new film. Now, we do still have James Vanderbilt and Jeff Pinkertner, as I believe they were the writers of their first film. And they have now added new uh, writers, as in Roberto Orchi and Alex Kurtzman, the writers of Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness, which had a really lot of hype for. And they also did um, also writings of, actually, Transformers 1 and Transformers Origin Revenge of the Fall, which were really good uh, films I enjoyed, actually. Um, a lot of people actually hit Transformers franchise, but... I actually found them really fun. But back to Spider-Man here. The Spider, the amazing Spider-Man 2, as I said, has been underrated for some reasons. I don't really know why, but I felt like it was an amazing film overall. So, let's go into um, the story here. It takes place after the events of the first reboot. Well, just the reboot overall. And it really goes into Peter Parker trying to, still being Spider-Man, but being the city Manhattan savior, while dealing with the fact of him trying to keep his promise to Gwen's father, Spoiler alert, he died in the first film, and he basically was killed, and he basically tried to promise Peter to stay away from Gwen as long as he's on the superhero journey. And he has been doing a really good job, he's actually been still dating her and still being with her, and he's still trying to deal with that as he's being actually haunted by little visions every once in a while as he sees um, his, her father throughout the film. Now, I don't want to go deep into that because I'll be going to spo like, not spoilers, but I don't want to ruin the parts. But um, it basically goes deeper into the fact that the first reboot, then actually this reboot overall, really uh, changed the story of uh, the original film, really, the original Sam Raimi trilogy, which a lot of people enjoyed, really went on to just continuing on origin, done in 30 minutes, and then continuing on from high school to college to this new man, which was, that was one, two, and three. And really, this film really searches out the story of Oscorp, which is this company of, of the Osborne family making this new technology and basically tries to figure out a, a showing story of Peter trying to figure out what happened to his parents and what happened to them overall and the mystery because this film actually the first film had a lot of mystery to it but it also had a lot of problems as to story written as in plot holes but I found out that after I saw this film the plot holes actually were answered from the first film so story wise it also adds new villains, for example, this is the first film to actually have the Electro character from the comic books, Max Dillon turns to the Electro, and basically Jamie Foxx is the new Electro, and I actually found Jamie Foxx actually being really well done here. Um, the only thing I felt odd about Electro overall was that he wasn't really as used as I thought he could have been, as he does a good job, and the moments when we see Electro are outstanding. But I felt like I wanted to see more of Electro overall. I mean, he really would have had a great presence on screen, his performance. But, I don't know. I just felt like when the film ended, I wanted more. I wanted more. And that's because I, was, I really do love the Spider-Man franchise overall. And even though this film is the longest film out of all the Spider-Man films, this is almost 2 hours and 30 minutes. 2 hours and actually 22 minutes overall, really. I felt like I wanted more because the film went by so quickly. And I enjoyed it so much. And that's just really fun, for, like, enjoyable for me, as I really do love, like, the Spider-Man films and the characters that they created. So, to see, um, there's some new, uh, characters, like, actors, like Jamie Foxx, like I said, he's, like, the main villain of this, this film storyline, which revolves around Oscorp and Peter trying to figure out more about his parents, 
and as he graduates high school along with his girlfriend Gwen Stacy, uh, performance by Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield, who is me, Peter Parker, um, they did a good job as a chemist, uh, couple, and actually they're dating in real life, so you actually see the chemistry on, on screen really develop overall, from the first film to this film, you really do see the development of their relationship in it, and you really do buy into it, you really do feel like they have a great, um, chemistry overall, I have to say. It really is great to see those two really, like, have their moments on screen, have their dramatic moments, and it works overall. And for me, it really did a good job. Um, the other actors, like Dane DeHaan, who was the new um, Harry Osborn, and he did a good job as well. He kind of brings something that the James Franco's um, Spider-Man, uh, Harry Osborn, couldn't really do was. He brought that creepy presence to him. Harry Osborn, he was um, in Spider-Man Raimi's trilogy, he was more of an, like a guy who became like someone that was happy, and also he started turning darker and darker. But he never had that factor of a Green Goblin in him. I mean, Harry on uh, Ding Dahan, he kind of brings a more darker and more creepier type of look while still giving off that charmish like style. He does a great job in the film overall. And then there's um, some other actors, but I really do like these main cast. And we also have Paul Giamatti. Plays a little cameo for Alexia Sevich, who is the new Rhino. And I must say, um, this film actually had a lot of people who were actually getting mad about the film because it was basically having three villains at the same time. If you don't know, this Spider Man 3 also had a lot of the same um, uh, cr criticism due to it having three villains, which was Spider Man 3 had Venom, had Sandman, and Green Goblin Jr., or Harry Osborne's Green Goblin. Or, and this film kind of has three villains, which is the Electro, Green Goblin, Harry Osborn, Green Goblin as well, and um, Rhino, which is more of a cameo, cameo in my opinion. Now, I think uh, the two main villains in this film are Electro and Green Goblin, and Rhino, I think he should have been left into the next film, maybe, Spider-Man 3, maybe, because he would have been more developed, and we actually would have seen him really transform into the Rhino there. And I really do thought... Um, Villains of War here are really well done, and I felt like in this way, they did something like this, they did something with the villains in this show that they couldn't have done with Spider-Man 3 at the time, and it really pays off, like, when you see, when you leave the theater, all the villains are, in my opinion, they're all, they all paid off overall. I mean, yes, Jimmy Fox is electro, he's not underutilized or underused, but I wish I would have seen more of him on screen, like, he was really under, the, like, not underdeveloped, but just like not really planned out really all together. Um, uh, one thing I do like about um, uh, Jamie Foxx's performance is he, at, before he turns into Electro, he kind of is um, a little more psychotic and a lot of like crazy cuckoo head. Like there's moments when he's talking to himself, having conversations with himself about him and Spider Man and all that stuff. And you kind of I like that kind of idea to him. And it was really kind of cool. But the problem that I have when he becomes Electro is how he actually becomes it when he snaps just like that on screen. It kind of felt un unsatisfying. I wanted more character build to the point when he looked at Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man saves his life and he kind of becomes his biggest fan. A fan of uh, Faniac or what is it? A fan crazy lunatic in some ways. And he doesn't really... They didn't really like build them up to the point when he would snap into the electro really. He just was like, oh, oh, it was like the typical thing that happens in other action films, like with the police. It, you may have seen it in the clips, but at the the reason why he becomes electro is when it becomes time the police accident. That's the real reason behind it. Don't I know I'm a little big Spider Man fan, and just don't try to say that's not really what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened in the film, and. Max is he Max probably gets delusion delusion and he basically just goes out and attacks Spider Man. I felt like in some ways they could have tried to really have a build up to Max's character to really transform it into the real Electro. The Electro that fans would have actually enjoyed a lot more and they would have been more satisfied with the film overall. And don't get me wrong, the film is actually really good when it comes to characters. And I really do like um Harry Osborne, but I feel like when he becomes into the Green Goblin, it felt a little weird in my opinion because when we had the original Green Goblin, which was Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man by Sam Raimi, 
which was, really, which was the original Green Goblin, he had that kind of voice that was actually worked. That kind of worked for the Green Goblin. That dark, sinister voice. Like, come on, make a fool of yourself, or something like that. But the reason why I think that worked really well was because they, they had an actor that was a great, that was a professional actor, William Dafoe, who was the original Green Goblin in the Sam Raimi trilogy. So he did a really good job as a Green Goblin because he was professionally active. This is a new Green Goblin, a younger Green Goblin. And when you see him on screen, it's not a joke, but I don't think it has that much impact that the original film had because it was already done before, Green Goblin. When he, when this new Green Goblin comes up to Spider-Man and says, Hello, Peter. You don't really get the same type of impact in my way. Um, I think that maybe if they really kind of made it more, his voice more darker and the, and just made overall just a lot more like psychotic, not psychotic, but more Green Goblin-ish like, it would have paid off perfectly. But don't get me wrong about his build-up. I mean, his build-up into the Green Goblin is actually really well thought out. I actually like how what they actually done with him. For example, um, this may be a little spoiler right here, so I want to go on later on into the video so you can actually not take spoiler. But Harry is actually dying from a degenerative disorder disease that's killing him. That killed his father Norman Osborn at the beginning of the film. Of the film, you see him. Not you don't see him die, but they say he dies from a disease. And Harry is going to be dying from the same disease as well. He, uh, he says that it starts to infect him already at a young age, and it's a genetic disease. And he basically needs Spider-Man to basically help him out in this way. Uh, like I said already, it's a spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen the film, actually go ahead of the go ahead of the video until later on. One must uh, so you won't be able to see that type of spoiler details. I don't want you to be spoiled because I really think you should check out this film. They did a really good job with the film overall, so whoever says the film is garbage, don't listen to them really, overall. Um, in my opinion, they did a really good job with the villains and the performances of Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, like I said before, are really well done. And it really does answer a lot more questions. Like in this film, in Spider-Man 2, they answer a lot of unwant um, unanswered questions from this film. Like for example, they didn't really go into detail about what really happened to his parents, or what were the parents really doing that kind of really led them to their, like, disappearance. I mean, we did learn a little bit, like, it has to do something about a spider, which is how Peter became Spider-Man, but it they didn't really go too in deep into details. And what this film does is that it actually goes into those details. Like, the first five, ten minutes of the film, it doesn't actually continue where the last one left off. It actually goes back in time, actually. And I really, I'm not going to say too much, because I was really surprised by what they did with that scene. It was really emotional, it was really great to start off a film like this, as it really did a good job as in really pulling me in, making me feel like, hmm, that was really interesting, overall. And I was entertained the entire way through. It's a good cup of water. Um, now, a lot of things I felt that were kind of weak were in Spider-Man, have been up, um, updated really well here. Like, for example, visual effects-wise, this amazing Spider-Man had some really good visual effects. So every once in a while, you could tell it looked kind of like cheesy or okayish, or in some ways inconsistent, if not. But however, in this film, they did a really good job with the visual effects. A lot of the CGI actually looked really well done. And actually, for the first time, the entire film was actually filmed in New York City, which in the other films, they haven't really shot the entire film in New York City. They shot it in a little bit in New York, then shot in Albuquerque or California, like in other films. But in here, the entire film was entirely done in New York. So I really like how they really stayed true to Manhattan type of feel to it. And that really did pay off for me as for me to have that realistic type of tone of Spider-Man in Manhattan. So they worked up paid for me. And what I liked about this film that the Sam Raimi trilogy did not do was the Sam Raimi trilogy did not actually follow a storyline from the comics. It basically went on its own and said, let's make our own story of the comics. And, but this film, The Amazing Spider-Man, what they're actually doing is they're actually paying, they're following the story of the comics, a storyline, The Amazing Spider-Man storyline, they're doing just that. So that's why he has those web shooters instead of it coming out of his, his arms. Um, kind of like how what Captain America the Winter Soldier did in April when it really stayed true to that film, that um, comic book storyline. So it, it was really nice to see them really stay true to the storyline and really uh, pay off and the ending here that I'm not gonna spoil if you like the comic book you're gonna love the ending of this film because it's just like the comic book 
And when the ending actually happened, I was really like felt like relieved. Like it almost made me tear up a, a little bit. And I was really surprised by how they actually did that. Really, they get away with it as well. But in my opinion, that's when the ending kind of feels not weak, but feels like they just jumped away from the real fact. I mean, this film could have been had a dark ending, like that deep down ending, like in a trilogy, like example, Star Wars. Um, not not the prequel trilogy, not episodes 1, 2, and 3, actually the old trilogy, which I actually saw a few while back. I saw it on my iPad, actually. Uh, episode 5, Empire Strikes Back. If you actually see that film, that film actually had a dark, gloom ending. It was, like, like really well done. What it means by it is that it leaves off on a sad note. This film, you see that it wants to leave off on a sad note, but it doesn't do that. They didn't actually have the balls to actually really do that. I felt like they, for a Spider-Man film, it was always that cheeky character and that cheeky type of guy, that cheeky hero that everyone loves. Because he's enjoyable and he's not super dark like Batman. He's not Batman, but he's more of a more enjoyable character. So that's I think that's why they didn't really go for the dark, like sad ending that they could have done here. And I think if they done the sad ending here, it would have actually you know it would have actually made the film a lot more better. Um. Oh. Um. Also, musically. The music here is actually really well done. Hans Zimmer is actually a musician of this film. He took over from the last musician who was. Uh, I don't know, James Horner. James Horner was the last musician of the la this film. And in, episode, in this film, Hans Zimmer also does a musician along with The Magnificent Six, which is with Pharrell Williams and Johnny Marr and tons of other musicians that involve six people in it. And what I really like about this film. Overall, is the music really does have a cool tone to it, and what they do with this film is they do really do add a lot of those cool Spider-Man shots. So if you really do read the comics of Spider-Man by heart, the all of the amazing Spider-Man comics, you're gonna see a lot of his poses and structures, like stuff like this, sort of woohoo at the beginning, or stuff like that. That's really well done. It's a cool kind of thing that they added for those who love the Spider-Man. So Spider-Man fans are really gonna get a big thing out of this. And actually, um, action-wise, Mark Webb does a great job with the action. Just like in my opinion, the last film, they, he did a good job with the action, and it really just paid off here. And the really standout action scene was the Times Square scene, well, um, when Spider-Man first faces off against Elect Electro, and he basically fights him there. And I really thought that was a cool scene because, uh, not to spoil anything, but Spider-Man actually, one of his web shooters actually get, um, gets sabotaged, and it doesn't work. He's a left web shooter. And he just gets to use one retro throughout this entire battle. And it's really cool to see Spider-Man, and it kind of shows, like, his abilities, what he can do in a battle when he's at a disadvantage. And it kind of shows, and it has, like, these all cool, like, slow-motion shots, and, like, these shots when things are frozen in time, and, like, the cool visual effects they added. Really well done. I really like that scene. Also, the climax, the climatic ending, uh, scene, I'm not gonna spoil, but holy crap, that ending, like, battle was really well done as well. I really do enjoy it. It was a great way to really, like end up battle, and it's even um, an itsy bitsy spider uh, part, which I really enjoyed. Uh, um, that's actually in the the battle between Spider-Man and Electro, not the Times Square one. Actually, later on, towards the ending, is a uh, itsy bitsy spider song that they put into the uh, battle, which I thought was really well uh, added. You know, it was smartly added, and I really like Electro's uh, introduction. The Electro's introduction, like. Like the if you heard saw the soundtrack and if you saw the, some of the trailers like that really cool like technological electric music and drums and bass music, that I really actually really like that song. Some people actually didn't like the music for Electro's entrance. I actually enjoyed it a lot. It was really kind of a cool darker tone. And it was in the trailers as well. It had the darker tone that really gripped you in. It really gripped you in and really like made you really like the dark tone that this film was going for. And I really do like that. Um, I didn't see any 3D or any of that stuff. I actually saw it in 2D, so shame, shame. But, um, overall, if you see it in 3D, it's all up to you guys. I didn't actually see it, so, uh -huh. Um, actually, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, in my opinion, does beat The Amazing Spider-Man at points. It's really well done. I really like when you go check it out. Don't think of it as just like a cash for Sony to check in, because this film is really... 
is taking a lot of chances. Just like Captain America, the Winter Soldier, took a lot of chances. This one takes a lot of chances. As I think that this film is kind of a prequel to the Sinister Six film that they're going to be making really soon. If you do not know what Sinister Six is, go look it up. It's about Marvel. I see what Spider-Man villains. You will know. Actually, this film kind of reminds me of the Sinister Six because there's little, like, little pictures or little scenes that you'll see in the credits and in the film that will probably lead to Sinister Six, which is kind of cool. Um, overall, Spider-Man 2, in my opinion, is an amazing film. In my opinion, it actually beats the amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 3 and um, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 1 overall. It may not beat Spider-Man 2 of uh, Sam Raimi's version, but I do compare this film to Spider-Man 2 as, as well. It's a great film to check out. It's not bad by any means necessary, so the, that 54% rating on medical... Um, Rotten Tomatoes, don't listen to it. Don't listen to it at all. In fact, I recommend you go check out the film yourself and basically you feel your experience. You see how you feel about it. If you like it, good for you. If you don't like it, too bad. I'm sorry about that. But overall, The Amazing Spider-Man is an outstanding film. I recommend you go check it out. It's a fun film. It's a great uh, action. It's a really great sequel. I really can't wait to see what they do with The Amazing Spider-Man 3. And I can't wait, basically, for war. Out of 10, The Amazing Spider-Man, I actually gave, I, if I were to review the original, I would give this film an 8.5 out of 10, right here. But the sequel, out of 10, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10, actually. I really did enjoy it. It was an amazing film overall. There's some good jokes that they added every once in a while when it came to Spider-Man. Um, Amazing, well done. The music was really outstanding, like the tones and the drops of the beat. It was really well done. Hands everyone did a great job with the music. Action-wise, there were some great action scenes. Visual effects are a hell of a lot better. The writing and story in this film is actually really well done. And there's some really great twists and turns I didn't see coming. Um, the story of mystery is really well done. The performances of Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield really pulled you in. I actually really love Emma Stone's performance as she kind of has that charm as an actress, as she can really do a really good job as an actress, and I really do love her performance in this. Um, overall, I can't wait to see what they do next with the franchise. I can't wait to see who the next villains are, who they're going to bring to the big screen. And if they do bring back some of the cool old villains, like maybe Doc Octopus, because in the trailer you see like his tentacles a little bit. Um, I can't wait to see what they bring next overall. So, overall, I say check it out. Um, I just can't I don't know what to say next. I'm stuck. I just, like, really love this film. I give it a 9 out of 10. It's enjoyable. It may not be Captain America The Winter Soldier, which is my favorite uh, superhero f film of this year so far, but it still is an amazing film to watch. Um, so please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Um, also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, I am Michael Martinez. Twitter, I'm DMichaelM1987. Um, just check me out there. Ask me any questions. Give me feedback, actually. To me, what sh if you actually saw the film, what did you think of it? Did you enjoy it? And basically, was it any fun for you? And did you basically love Spider-Man? Um, overall, I enjoyed it overall. Like I said before, I'm sorry for repeating myself. But I just can't. I don't know what to say it, except that it's amazing. It's amazing. No pun intended. I really, do not mean to be punning on the amazing line. But overall, check it out. Give me your opinion. Bye.